Well, welcome back to Outdoors with the Meads. I'm your host, Glenn Mead, and today we're going to go over some trailer stuff. Um, Coyote wants to go for a ride, so we're going to load it up on the trailer, and we're, I'll show you how I secure it down to the trailer, and we'll also go over a couple safety tips so you can safely get your trailer tractor down the road. Stay tuned. All right, folks, so the first thing you want to do whenever you're going to be thinking about towing your tractor down the road is safety. Um, we'll start from the front and go to the back. The first thing is what you see on the screen here is your tow vehicle. Uh, in my case, it's a half ton full size pickup truck. Um, it's rated for over 9,000 pounds towing. So it will safely pull the tractor and the trailer down the road. Um, combined weight is just around 7,000 pounds so it's under but anytime you are pulling you want to be above your capabilities you don't want to be right maxed out um, going down the road level ground fine if you're going up a hill or down a hill you want to be able to safely do so um, in regards to the truck you also want to make sure you have a brake controller either one that's integrated into the truck like mine is or you can buy an aftermarket uh, trailer brake controller to control the, the brakes on the trailer yes this is a full-size truck but when you have double the weight going down the road you need double the brakes to safely be able to stop an emergency the next thing we're going to look at is the trailer itself I have a PJ trailer. This is an 18 foot. It's rated for 7,000 pounds. A uh, common mistake here is that it says 7,000 pounds. You think you can haul 7,000 pounds on the trailer, and that is not the case. You need 7,000 pounds minus the weight of the trailer itself. Um, this trailer is about 800,000 pounds. So that gives you roughly about 6,000 pounds you can actually put on the trailer. Um, my Coyote is a CK3510 with the bucket and the backhoe and weighted tires. It's roughly about 5,500 to 6,000 pounds. So I'm pretty much maxing out on this trailer. Um, if I would do it again, I'd get a 10, uh, 20 foot trailer rated at 10,000 pounds. That's way. I'm way over the safety limit um, for for what I'm doing with it the farthest this would go is probably 50 miles around so I'm not too concerned about being at the max but if you were gonna take your tractor and go cross country or go to another city two hours down the road you might want to consider getting a bigger trailer like I would um, in order to tow it safely down the road and like I said with the truck you want to make sure that the trailer you buy has brakes this trailer has four four wheel brakes on it and it I can feel it when I hit the brakes on the truck I can feel the actual trailer brakes kicking in so the next thing everybody is the trailer inspection um, your tow vehicle it might be your daily driver so you know if your brakes are going bad if you got lights out every your tires are good you know all that the trailer on the other hand you might tow it once a month a couple times a season these trailers sit it's a good idea every time you hook up to the truck to check your lights check your tires um, the tread on them we'll walk along here Check the grease, make sure the hubs are full of grease. And like I said, you're, you want to make sure your tires are properly inflated. The tread's looking good. There's no rub marks or cuts on the sidewall from previous use. And speaking of tires, it's always a good idea to have a spare tire. And if you do have a spare tire, I would highly recommend making sure that the you got proper inflation on that uh, the last thing you want is a flat tire on the road you go to put the spare on and it's only got 20 psi in it it's going to do you absolutely no good 
<coughs> excuse me so make sure your spare is as good as the regular tires and check all your lights because and make sure that you are good to go down the road safely and the next thing you want to do is whatever you're going to be chaining or strapping your tractor down to the trailer make sure it's rated for the weight of the tractor uh, for me i'm a little overkill i could have went with 5 16 uh 70 grade chain i actually went with 3 8 chain now i'll show you that quickly what i use here i have two chains that are about six foot long and i have one chain that i left at factory length at the 20 foot length that i got and i also use chain binders some people say to use chain other people use straps bottom line is use whatever is rated for the tractor that's the biggest key um, don't just go to harbor freight buy a four pack of straps for ten dollars and think it's going to hold your tractor to the trailer if something goes wrong it's not you need heavy duty straps or heavy duty chain <coughs> to make it safely go down the road so that's i mean that's pretty much all the safety getting ready um now when you go to load your tractor uh, biggest thing you want is level ground if you can see this my truck and trailer are sitting level I mean worst case scenario you have to be on a slight hill if that's the case put blocks on your tires on the trailer on the truck um, we've seen many videos where as soon as you're starting to load the tractor up on the trailer the back is going to want to go down, the front's going to go up, and there's not much weight in the back of a pickup truck. I've seen it where it lifts the whole back of the truck up into the air, and if this is on a hill, it's going to start going downhill. Luckily for me, the type of ramps I have, they have feet on them. So as soon as the weight's on, it's going to, the trailer's going to plant to the ground, and the truck's not going to go up in the air, making it very safe to go up onto the trailer the other thing you want to do is on the truck set your e-brake um, that way no matter how easily you try to put this tractor on the trailer that trailer is going to want to rock forward and backward and that's a lot of weight going against the gears in your transmission I don't care if you have automatic your parking gear or if you got a standard it's going to go against the, you rather have it go against the brake the brake will hold that truck from rocking back and forth while you're loading it and the last thing when loading don't be in a hurry go slow it's a lot of weight and yes it doesn't look like this trailer is off the ground that much but if you s slip and that tire comes off i can almost guarantee you you will flip so take your time go slow and you will have nothing but a good time loading up your trailer and getting down the road safely and that's what it's all about doing it safely so i'm going to cut out for now i'm going to load up the trail tractor because everybody's seen how the tractor goes on the trailer i'll hook up the chains to it get it all secure so it's going to be about 10 minutes for me and it's going to be a split second for you and we'll when we come back, we'll show you how I secured the tractor to the trailer. All right, and I'm back, and the tractor is now on the trailer. I'll go through and show you all the secure points that I did from the trailer to the tractor. Uh, biggest thing you want is four points of securement, two in the front, two in the back. That way, if one fails, you still have opposite ends that will sec secure that trail tractor to the trailer until you come to a safe stop and you can readjust your chains or your straps whether they came loose came undone or strap tore and broke or chain snapped you do it on all four corners and that way if like i said if one breaks you still have the two opposite corners holding that to the trailer so 
So as you can see, I don't have the D-ring state pockets. I just use the pocket. And what I do is I loop the chain through the hole and put the hook on the top. That way if the chain does come loose, the hook cannot fall off. The gravity is um, going to hold it onto the pocket. Do that on both sides. And come around in here. Actually, it's going to be a better sight from in here. There we go. You can see on my previous video, I made this bracket to go on the front of my tractor. A uh, couple D rings welded to a plate, bolted to the frame of the tractor. That way, I have two tie down points on each side going to each side of the trailer. And as we come to the back, this is where my chain binders came in fact okay like i said same thing here through the pocket hook goes up and over the pocket hooks on the top of it i'm gonna come to the chain binder go past that first because the chain actually goes to the tractor um what i found on my tractor here this is from if you own a backhoe these are the points that hold the backhoe onto the tractor. Uh, so they're kind of strong, strong enough for me anyway. So that's what I'm going to use on each side of the tractor. And that chain actually comes down to the red hook here. That's how this side is secure. I can see this loose chain. That's so I can continue it to the other side. And you can see I have a chain binder on that side as well. So even though it's one chain, it's pretty much two chains that are connected to each other in the middle. Um, one does not, if one fails, it does not affect the other side. Now with the backhoe in mind, um, on particularly on this tractor being the Coyote, if the backhoe is on, you cannot use these points for your chain. And so as you can see here on the draw bar, I put a big old shackle on it. And that's actually how I tie it down. Um, it's not the right way to do it, honestly. But, like I said, for what I'm doing with it, this is going 5 miles down the road, 10 miles down the road. Not a big deal, especially. But if you are going to do this and only have one point on the tractor going to the trailer, make sure it's in the back, in the front of the trailer you have a lot more control over your gas pedal than you do your brake pedal. You can control how fast you're going to go, but you can't control those idiots on the road that are going to pull out in front of you and you got to come to a stop quick. So you want those two points out back pulling on this tractor when you come to a stop. Um, and that's it. I mean, some people say to use the crisscross pattern. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could crisscross them. Don't crisscross them. The biggest thing is you have four points going diagonally from the tractor down the trailer. That way, if one fails, you have two other ones working opposite, holding the tractor down to the trailer. That's why it's four points of contact. You actually are securing this tractor twice. And that's the whole point of securing it. Get safely down the road, people. I don't want to see anybody hurt. Um, you don't have to copy my ideas people. I'm just showing you the solutions that I came up with for the coyote and Honestly, you spend 30 40 50 thousand dollars on these tractors They should have points From the factory to secure your tractor to the trailer Why they don't do that? I don't know there are companies out there now for um <clears throat> john deere <clears throat> the green company sorry i don't want to pay ten thousand dollars for the paint that's another story for another day um, bottom line is many people own the john deere they're very attractive and that's why people make stuff for them um, and there's a company out there that specifically make places to bolt onto the frame to attach your chain to so if you own a john deere um go to good works tractors or tractor time with tim um they have solutions for doing that to your john deere 
uh, being a coyote that's what I own um, this is how I did it so but that's everything to it and then uh, tractor's gonna go for a nice ride and do a little job at a friend's house and then uh, maybe get a bath on the way back because the uh, mud and tractors yeah tractors are supposed to get dirty but I like to keep mine clean that way if there ever is a problem like a uh, a leak or a crack or a bolt coming loose it's a lot easier to find when it's clean than covered in mud um, one final thought don't do this don't leave stuff in your bucket I'm just showing you this so that you see it but this trailer gets bouncing or hits a pothole or something I mean there's rocks in there they can bounce off bucket and hit the car behind you and that's a lawsuit you don't want so i'm actually gonna undo the, all this and empty the bucket before i go but i just want to show you this is one of those no no's you don't want to do if you can avoid it but uh yeah so that's everything for today people i uh, appreciate you watching uh, if you like what you see hit that like button if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see videos I've already made with this tractor, I've made probably about 10 videos now so far. Um, I'm slowly doing them. It's been a hectic summer. Um, when I think I could get out there, it just starts raining, and then you got to wait for the rain to stop. This pain in the butt, but uh, we're going to enjoy life as we can because it's short gotta love it while you can um one final note canopy um if you have one and it's removable remove it before going down the road that's just a sail in the wind and that wind's gonna want to take it right off so um i plan on taking mine off before i go down the road but i just want to throw that last bit in there um but anyway thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time on outdoor with the meads take care